It's, it's just like learning to write. It's an ongoing process that varies as you go from one kind of writing to another. And it requires your expertise in your discipline to help people become members of your discipline to learn the kind of documentation styles, the kind of um, uh, conventions that you use to, you know, to properly attribute. And, but at the same time, I think that at some point you got to say, this is plagiarism, whether you meant it or not. And I'm going, I mean, if we all keep going, well, but they didn't really mean it, it's okay, it's a learning opportunity. At some point, it just keeps going on and on because Professor X did nothing about it, Professor Y did nothing. You know, it's, it's bad old Professor Z then, you know, is, is the real ogre because he gave you an F. So I think at some point, and th that's why this front-loading thing that Candace has been talking about all day, today is, is, I think, really important. Um, some of the issues that we, that we talked about today are issues that I just want to remind us of. One was the idea of scaffolding, and that is creating assignments along the way where you can check their use of sources. You can then say, you're doing it right, you're not doing it right. And that's the point at which you don't have to give them a zero. And what their final papers do, by then they should have it. They should have it by then. Um, scaffolding means breaking larger assignments into smaller bits so that along the way they, they learn the, the skills they need to, to succeed at the end. So think about what's your major projects at the end and, and just break it down for yourself. What do they need to know? And don't leave out documentation as part of that, the whole process. Remember that they probably learned citation, if they learned it at all, from modern language association in an English class. If you're teaching history, that's not that far off. But if you're teaching biology, it can be very far off. Um, the use of direct quotes. We talked about that a lot today. You're not using direct quotes mostly in the sciences. Students need a lot of practice in summarizing. In fact, you're often not quoting from a specific section of the text. You're talking about the study as a whole. You need to cover that with your students and say, OK, ask them, what did you learn about it so far? What do you know about citation? OK, let's do some practice exercises on it. Now, how is it different the way we're doing it here? How many use models of the kind of writing they want the, their students to do? They get to see either other student papers or professionally written papers. Anybody use those? OK, when you show them the models, don't just show them the models and say it's out there. Talk about it. You know, and say, OK, here's how this, look at how this person cited. Why did they do it that way? Why do they have like, Four people in parentheses, four people's names in parentheses after this one section. Why is there more citation in the literature review you know, than, than in the results section? I mean, really talk about those things with them. So what I'm saying is we all have to provide instruction in this one aspect of writing. We also have to provide them with some kind of feedback as they go along as to how they're doing. So um, on that handout, I have some suggestions for some peer review kinds of feedback you can do if you don't really want to do a lot of grading yourself, you can just take some time in class. Now, we heard today about a wonderful history class where students do that kind of thing. And you said it's pretty successful, Rebecca. If you have them do turnitin.com reports, they can talk about that in a peer group review. What did your report say? You know, what did your report say? And they can compare those in a peer group review. If they, do, if they do have to come up with a primary source and a secondary source, they can look at each other's sources and talk about those. Then there's the issue that came up today of the transfer of knowledge. And I think we, we've been talking about that all day. But remember to, to try and make bridges for them. What you're learning in this class may come in handy in your other, kind, other classes as you advance in classes through, through this degree, or if you're doing a more general class, how, what kind of critical skills or critical things are you learning? Maybe the most important, and it's not even in this, is how you, how you introduce them to the topic of documentation. So often I've seen it taught as a series of where you put the comma and whose name is first. Well, you know, they have, they have programs that take care of that for you now. You just, you just put in the author's name, you say it's a journal article, it, it puts it together for you. So it's no longer important for them to necessarily know all those details. The details they do need to know, and Benny also already brought this up. What is a citation style? There are different ones. What is the purpose of a citation style? Let me ask some of you. Purpose of a citation, why, why do we do it? 
James, give credit where credit is due. Thank you. Yeah. To show that, yeah, that, that you have done your research and you know what other people say on the subject. To show that you're a member of a scholarly community and, and you have some authority based on the fact that you've read up on it. What else? Anything else? You can get more information by going tracing back through the sources. What else can you get if you trace back through the sources? More sources. You can also get a sense of the credibility of the author. Did they properly, did they take something out of context? Did they properly... Um, understand the study that they're basing their argument on. Um, so it, it again, it adds to your credibility as a, as a member of a, a discourse community, a community that, that discusses and talks about an issue. And so I think if students kind of buy into the fact that there's more reasons we do this than to just make sure the commas are right, that's really important. But so often we forget to tell them that as a first stage. And then of course there's all the things we talked about today in terms of how it affects your integrity as a person and possibly your job, your future. Um, so when you introduce the assignment, a written prompt is important. Don't just rely on the academic integrity statement in your syllabus. Make sure that you add whatever else they need to know about citation in your discipline. It could be, it could be in that assignment sheet that you give them or a separate handout, but probably important not to say, oh, just go check this journal and follow that style. Because, now I heard some really clever things today. Some people say, go find this journal and do an exercise that will help you infer from that, was that you read it, what the style is. Now that's a good way to do it. Don't just say, and so often I hear people say, well, they told me just to follow this style. Well, it's pretty difficult if you don't know anything about documentation to figure out the style just by looking at a journal article. This goes for your graduate students as well. So I think um, some kind of guidance through there will be helpful. And now if you use any of the common styles like um, uh, APA, American Associ uh, Psychological Association, MLA, Council of Science Editors, the date style or the author style, many uh, handbooks uh, do cover those. And there's also a lot of websites. And also on the Writing Center website, there's a section we have called webliography and there's a research section there and it gives links to a lot of the styles that are available and let me reiterate if you want us to do some kind of handout with you to put up for your for your whole department sometimes it's not a bad idea for a department to get together and say this is the style we're going to ask our students to use it's not as important that they always use exactly the same style for the same journal as it is that they understand again what a style is for and what's important in your discipline most of the styles used in our discipline have a date as a primary feature. Most of the styles in our discipline, you know, uh, uh, privilege the first author for some reason or another. This is not always true. So what are those differences? Now, authenticity. Candace said I would talk about authenticity in assignments. And this comes to engagement, too. To me, this is the very most important thing I've, I've learned thinking about this the last few days. Plagiarism probably comes as much from lack of engagement in the learning process as any other problem. So I put um, for you an article called Integrating Land Conservation Planning in the Classroom as an example of a professor here who provided an authentic assignment for his students in the wildlife uh, and fishery sciences. Yay, wildlife and fisheries. <laughs> and um, he had them go and talk to landowners who needed an environmental plan. And he had them write in the style that they would have written were they actually filing a real environmental plan. They went to the website for, for, these, you know, for the agency that oversees these plans. And they wrote in that style. Because they had a real audience who they could interview, um, it's, first of all, it's a lot harder, harder to copy when you have something like that. It's, a, it's an authentic problem. But it's more about, I think, engagement than it is only about that. If you recycle assignments because they work for you, you've got to make sure you change them up a little bit every semester. Uh, when you have students select their own topics, you've got to make sure that they're not selecting their roommate's topic or their brother's topic from a couple years ago. So you've got to ask them about the topic in class in workshops, for example, like Rebecca does, where they have to actually talk about it to you along the way. 
Um, but authentic assignments, there's, there's nothing to beat those. Case, case studies might work for some of you, too, where at least if it's not a real audience, it's a, at least a somewhat real situation, and they have to respond to particular things in that situation. The key here is making them keep track of both what sources they're using and what page numbers they're getting information from, okay? So you may have to teach them the difference between, you know, like making in your notation whether this is a direct quote or a paraphrase. On the annotated bibliography, that is something you can do as you're getting students working toward a fuller research paper. It's a good way to, get, to make sure that not only are they doing the research, but they're learning something from the research. That they're actually, because they have to write a summary in the annotated bibliography of what the research is about, and then another step you can take is say, and how does it relate to my thesis, or my topic, or how might I use this? Add that to the annotated bibliography. Not just this is what this source says, but this is how I might be able to use this source in my paper. And uh, that gets them, that what happens so often is they don't read the sources, right? Uh, they don't understand them when they do read them. I'm not sure what the fix for that is, but I know that that's a big part of the problem. And I think a part of the fix is giving them enough time. I heard recently of a W course that has a 15-page paper at the end. It's a capstone course in English, so that's probably reasonable. But boy, that's pretty hard. They have one paper at the beginning of five pages and one at the end of 15 on two different topics. Maybe we should expect that of English majors. That's probably true. But for most majors, that would, that would be a real hard jump. And this student, this was, there was a student I was talking to who was very surprised because he got a C on that five-page paper. But he did everything he could to improve it, to get better, to, to take into account the teacher's comments and improve. But then when he got to the 15, he still got a C. He was so surprised. Well, the stakes were just raised to a whole new level. The 15-page paper is a whole different animal than the five-page paper. So what are you doing to kind of get your students to that point that they need to be at to succeed in that final project? So that they're not under the kind of stress. You know, we know that students also plagiarize because of lack of time and lack of understanding. These are the kinds of things that I really feel that we could be catching early on if we're looking at having students look at drafts of each other's paper and tell them, look for these kind of things. Look for quote marks that don't, that don't end. Look for places where a quote's just dropped in there. Look for places where, a, and th this one's another case where mostly direct quotes are being used. Even in English, direct quotes should be used very sparingly. They should basically be used when you can't say it in, the, in your own words as well as the original, when you really want to emphasize a point from the original, when there's a lot of credibility to that person. And that's, that's about all you really need direct quotes for. Now, the art of paraphrasing and summarizing, very difficult. And some of our most popular handouts uh, in the Writing Center are ones on paraphrasing and summarizing. It's a, it's a hard skill to learn but they can only learn it within the context of their disciplines. They can start learning it in an English class, and they do, but they really need to practice that one a lot. Once they learn how to cite, they're gonna go through a little bit of a learning curve where they're really worried and they're citing everything. So now you have to teach them how to synthesize that material and put some of their own voice back into it. And again, that's only gonna come from engagement with the topic. I mean, and the good thing about the writing part is if you give them enough time and help them write it over the course of a semester, they can get engaged enough with the topic and they can share it with their peers to the point where they really do have something to say about it. So you really want them to kind of get that confidence that you do have some expertise. And another thing I do when I start teaching this is I do talk about them joining a conversation of scholars, first learning what other people in the room have to say, listening, getting it clear, knowing who said what, and then jumping in themselves and adding their own two cents.